am doing awesome. It is Friday, which means that is my favorite day of the week. It's my sip and sew. Um, but tonight, technically, I'm not sewing, so we'll have to talk about that. Uh, let me pull up my feeds here and we can get going. Is everybody having a great week? Um, oh, this week was crazy town. Um, oh, there I am. I am. Um, it has been nutso around here this week. Um, not a complaint. I'd much rather be busy and have too much work to do than not enough. So that is definitely not a complaint. Let me pull up my um, YouTube channel. So if you just missed it, Denise unexpectedly jumped on my uh, pre-show. So every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm on. Um, <clears throat> I am on YouTube and Facebook for my, my big shows. So a lot of times I have planned things to talk about and schedule things. And then by 10 minutes before, because I can't use Instagram with my software, um, I get on to do a pre-show, like a 10 minute before my live pre-show. And Denise jumped on. And so I <laughs> dragged her onto Instagram with me. So if you want to check out our a conversation, feel free to jump over later. Don't leave now. Um, and see what we were chatting about for the few minutes before this started. She is not joining me tonight. <laughs> Everybody's like, boo, boo hoo. So let me just say hi to some friends and we'll get going. I'll explain to you what it is that I am working on tonight. Um, let's see. Let me, so Sunny's on YouTube. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Sunny. Um, oh, 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 there's my new friend. Okay, so we have Debbie Sinclair from Kentucky. Hi, thanks for joining us. Mel and Joe from Mississippi. Hi, friends. Uh, Linda Wood from Texas is on. Let me see if I can um, do this with my mouse. Oh, look at that. It works. I don't have to reach for my computer. Uh, Linda is on from Tennessee. Hi, Lisa Meadows. Um, very, very, very good friend from Phoenix. Hello. Thanks for joining me. And Kathy's friend from Redmond. Hi, hi. Oh, Jennifer's on. You guys, I met a new friend. I'm pretty sure she was Denise and I's twiplet, tri uh, twiplet. I swear I've only had one sip of wine. <laughs> Triplet. She, uh, her name is Jennifer and she's down uh, in Reno normally, but I talked to her for quite a while today. She's in an RV on her way up here to the Pacific Northwest and I am going to fix her featherweight. So yay, Jennifer is watching from the Grand Tetons. And we have Nancy on... Oh, goodness, Nancy from Lake Stevens, Kathy from Illinois. Thanks, sweetheart, for joining us. Sandy Reese from Massachusetts. Oh, and Christy's on. Hi, hey, Christy. So, Christy, did you decide not to buy the 99 or did you save money because I told you what to pay for the 99? You'll have to tell me how that conversation worked out. And Judy's on from Kansas. Hi, Judy. I sent your beginning machine quilting kit and your little rubber band off to you today. So that is on its way. And Kim pulls in. Hello, Kim. Oh, she, you are welcome for help with your sewing machine feet, Kim. Uh, Therese is on from Tennessee. Hi, Terry Nelson. I have your beautiful uh, Colleen on with me tonight. Colleen is a sewing machine, not a person. Um, we are not, we are sipping. We are not sewing, to, we as an I. I have too much stuff going on in the, um, in the, uh, shop behind me the line of machines is getting out of control so i am working on a machine tonight on camera um <clears throat> noretta's on from iowa hello and bernadette is on from ontario canada hello sweetheart and uh, tammy is on from glen rose texas that sounds like a very pretty place very fun so as I said tonight, um, normally I'm sewing on a project. I am doing, I was supposed to be working on Nebula tonight, but I did not get it going in enough time today. And it's Nebula is not one of those things that you can um, have to concentrate on with the rulers and the cutting and all of that and everything else. <laughs> Good, Christy. Oh, Jeanette's on. Jeanette, your quilt's on the frame right over here. I mean, it went missing. You guys, Jeanette made the most beautiful quilt. It's green. I will, be, I know, right? Big shocker in the screen. I'm going to be taking a picture of it when it's done down at the Kirkland waterfront because it is so beautiful. But um, I told Jeanette it might go missing in my studio because it's like really, 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 really pretty. And Kathleen is on from West Virginia. Hello. All right, so the shop is overloaded. I am working on this machine. We actually had three machines leave the orphanage this week, which is 
a lot for one week. Uh, thank you all, by the way, for supporting my small business. And this is one of them. And this one needs to be gone through. It came to me from a, um, a nice lady named Colleen had passed away. <laughs> Don't you steal it. <laughs> you kind of know where I live, Jeanette. So that would be very bad of me to steal it. <laughs> It was damaged beyond all recognition. Don't go look at my bed. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so anyway, I am just in getting this machine into what I call um, service mode. So I'm taking off all the covers and all of that. Um, so I'm keeping a little, oh, let me, hold on, let me do this. Ray is not here tonight. So Ray, are, Ray isn't here. Lisa, are you me around? Lisa is my go-to gal when I need, um, someone to link something. Lisa says, you guys are my go-to or my distraction tonight. Oh, no, no, skin set, cancer surgery yesterday. It was larger than expected. Lots of stitches. Oh, you poor thing. Okay. We'll cheer you up, I promise. <laughs> so anyway, I was going to show you when I'm working on a machine, I have this little crafe ramekin thing, and I keep all of my parts in one place. Because just in case you didn't know, all of these screws are proprietary and not made again. So I also make sure I have a towel underneath me. So if something goes flinging out of my hands and it hits the table, it, it just, the towel dampens the... Um, the roll off. So anyway, that's, uh, I just wanted you guys to know what I was doing. So I'm taking parts off here. Um, <clears throat> oh, you guys are all so sweet. You guys, Lisa is like the most wonderful lady. She, um, I think I've told you guys about her. She was a real friend and fan when we were like, a month old as a company and she has just remained so wonderful to me and my family every time I go into Phoenix I see her I make special time just for her she is a pretty special lady so I'm sorry you are recuperating that is terrible um no oh gosh rogue is down here no so the baby bunnies are still in their burrow Rogue is very much fascinated with the uh, with the baby bunnies in the backyard. We did some calculations on their gestational age. We found them, sweet Lord, that's tight. We found them at about a week old. Um, and so they, I know they're a week because they were just getting fur, but their eyeballs were not open yet. Um, and so that, according to the website, we, um, we read, it meant that they were, gosh, this machine is so clean, you guys. There isn't even barely any junk underneath the, um, the belt or the motor mount. I mean, that's crazy. Anyway, um, so the baby bunnies were about a week old when Rogue found them and displaced them from their little burrow. And so he can't, he's not allowed to go outside now until, um, they have left and it's about a, uh, three week gestation for them. So we have to walk him outside. Every time he has to go out, he needs to be escorted outside because he's super naughty and he wants to go check on his little bunny friends. It's, it's national boba day, you guys. So the family brought me some boba. Thank you, sweetheart. So cheers, National Boba Day. Do you guys know what boba is? I can tell you it's not what you have in your cup. <laughs> it's a chunky drink is what it is. This one is from the place down the street. Delicious. <clears throat> All right. Oh, look at how much stuff is in Miss Colleen's thing here. Wow, 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 wow. Look at that. That is an impressive dust bunny. Impressive. <sighs> Let's see here. Just a word, stand up for yourself with the doctors. Oh, been telling them about this spot for almost two years and they finally agreed to do a biopsy. 
Jeez, and crackers. You know their body, so keep speaking up. Okay, done preaching. That's a good public service announcement, Miss Lisa. <laughs> Usually spend more time searching for to find the bouncy points than when they hit the ah uh, right 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 I know Gwen <clears throat> okay boba is a it's basically the the milk tea usually with tapioca but they've gone into like regular sweet teas like this one has like little chunks of mango in it it's really good it's really good <laughs> Mel. I was like, no choking on the chunks. Okay. Uh, Jennifer wants to know what your, oh, with well, this is a 1949. This was an excellent condition, 1949. I mean, there are some subtle imperfections in the, in the, uh, like surface scratches on the paint, but almost nothing to speak of. And the woman, who owned it before was a phenomenal seamstress. You should have seen the amount of, we'll say stuff that I had to weed through um, to, to take out all the other stuff. I mean, like vintage uh, spool threads and <laughs> high blue diva. It was a decent sized dust bunny. Um, she also came with all this other stuff. So, and I kept some of this for Miss Terry. Um, so this was in the, in the thing. It's their laundry tags. Look at that. And it's her, the lady's name on this was Colleen. So Clarence must have been her husband because the tags say Clarence or Clarence E. Morgan. Isn't that fun? So I kept that from Miss Terry. It has, she has her little manual. She has this really cool pewter thimble. Five original bobbins. She's got the ruffler with four um, kick plates on it. We've got the screwdriver, the um, little dust thing, uh, bias binder, searing. Oh, pretty much everything. She's got the other little screwdriver. So you got both screwdrivers, zipper foot, wide and narrow. Yeah, this is a complete accessory kit. Hi, baby. So, lucky, lucky Miss Terry. <laughs> oh, share tea. We like share tea. Jeanette says, no, I need to run to share tea when your show is done. Um, Blue Diva says, now that's cool. I love seeing what people carry in their feather rate cases and all the attachments. I know. I think it's very cool. Uh, Fran, uh, Franny, you almost, Fran, Fran Lordy from Indiana. You almost missed me. What? Um, Melanie says, are the 1946 machines you talked about this week considered more rare and more? Oh, it wasn't the 46. It was the 61. The 61 machine that was uncovered in... Um, Phoenix by my in-laws, that machine was, I've had a lady on my wait list for like three years for a 61. She wanted one from the year she was born. They were not made in the U.S. after 47, no, 57. Sorry, my mind is a little tired tonight. So trying to find one that if you're, were born 58, 59, because they were made until about 69, the machines were, you have to get them overseas out of the Great, out of the Great Britain plants because they're not really around here in the U.S. And not only was the 61 in good shape, but it even had the vintage original 110 motor and we didn't even have to do any motor work with it. Okay, let's see. Oh, yes, those magnetic boats, bowls are pretty awesome from Harbor Freight. At some point, I'm going to have them available in the shop, but that's another day. Can only I can only claim so many mountains in one day. No choking, right, Mel? Okay. Whew, dirty. Well, I have an exciting weekend ahead. Not really. 
year-end inventory so I can close up my books from last year. I'm a little behind, okay? So that is what I am doing this weekend. Woo! Ooh, that's grote. Okay, so while I'm in here, everybody's just going to get a mini class. So this is the original drip pan. It, this white stuff on here is from um, the oxidation of the lead lined wiring in the belly of the machine. So let me show you what that looks like real quick. Do you see this? These are the wires that come out of the lamp. And back in the day before they knew that, um, you know, the lead was poisonous, they would coat the wires in a lead lining because it was flexible and when you would bend it, it would stay in place. So if you, <laughs> if you uh, have one of these guys and you open it up and it looks like this, see all the, the it's just crumbling. What you do, is you take your cleaning brush, I call this the chimney sweep end, and you are going to kind of shield your eyes and your face because you don't actually want to breathe any of this stuff. And I will absolutely be washing my hands before I touch any food or lick my hands. Who licks their hands? Um, especially during a pandemic. Come on, come on, people. Um, but the big concern here, people, is you do not want this wire to be in those gears. So I'm going to just make sure that it's bent out of the way and not giving any, any, uh, trouble. How'd everybody else's week go this week? What mountains have you guys climbed this week? Tell me. I just said, oh, 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 <laughs> I know it is about time on inventory. I agree. Poor Sandy in Massachusetts, she's homeless because they sold their house and then they snowbirded. Is that a word? Snowbirded? Sure. And so she came back to Massachusetts homeless. <laughs> so they're buying a house. <laughs> Only, <laughs> FYI, the lead won't come off your hand with a rinse. You got to use soap. And, oh, thanks, Mel. Yeah, I was going to use soap and water, but that's a good reminder. I should have gloves on, right, everybody? Ooh, that's grote. More continued dust bunny. This, I know this machine was used because you just can tell the way that the lady, you know, like cared for it, um, that it, this was her pride and joy. For sure, pride and joy. Ray, would you do me a favor and get me some bed cushions, a belt, a uh, bed cushions, a belt, uh, what else, a belt, a spool, spring, and red disc, I think that's it, okay. Mm. Odie's had car troubles this week, that's not good. Drinking them away. That's my friend. That's my friend. Uh, oh, Kim Paulson's on. She said my rental house in Florida is under contract. Yay. Good job. Tammy from Florida said, or I was in Florida visiting a friend. She had gifted me with my first featherweight. Oh, that is the best friend ever. I don't have it in Texas yet, but she's going to bring it when she comes home. Wow, 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 wow. Tammy, you have good friends. That's amazing. Sewing, oh, Blue Diva in the UK is sewing new seat cushions for her friend's camper van. Very nice. I was sipping earlier, well, I mean, right before I jumped on. Um, I did one, another one of those. I um, bought the bottle of wine based on the fact that I just liked the bottle of wine. Do you guys want to see it? It's like pink and sparkly. So it's a um, Pinot, uh, sparkling Pinot Noir. It's very good, actually. Thank you, my dear. And one more thing, and then I'm, can you get this hot? 
wet and with a drop of dishwashing soap. Oh, not that those bed cushions, the regular bed cushions. Okay, um, let's see here. Franny said we finally had our first in-person quilt meeting. Oh, it was so nice to be able to see everybody. That's awesome. Very, very, very cool. <laughs> yes, Mel, inquiring minds want to know, have you named your machine that you got from your friend, Miss Tammy? Therese says we had a dogwood festival in Knoxville this week, found a new To Me Garden to tour. Wow, that's fun. You guys are fun. Jennifer Anderson got my first featherweight. Can't learn how to use her next week. You guys, poor Jennifer. This is my new friend from Reno. She is a Bernina gal, and I'm a Bernina gal, so I get it. But she got her first featherweight, which was a 1936 and it worked fine initially, and now it's just messing up every time. Thank you, sweetheart. Every time it so she sews with it. So um, we're going to get her all squared away. She's going to be up here at an RV park, um, and we're going to get together, and I'm going to get her the 411 on her little cute machine. <laughs> Sandy Reese. Yum. Let's see. Charlene. Uh, I was gifted the metal. For, oh, good, good. I was told to put it in the oil hole. Where might that be? I see no holes anywhere that would fit. I hate to tell her. Oh, um, Charlene, if it's the one that goes in the oil hole on the featherweight, it's this hole right here on top of the machine. Uh, Linda Woods says. Sometimes it won't fit. Yeah, just so you know, too. Um, who said that? Charlene. Uh, that that thread stand that fits in the oil hole does not fit in all featherweight, so it may not it may not work with yours. Um, uh, Odie said that they got closed down again to no indoor dining. I think we're headed there next week, Odie, up here in the King County, Seattle area. It's poor restaurants. That's all I'm gonna say. Poor restaurants. Um, Linda Wood. I used to like to lick my fingers to knot my needle. Then I was helping a nursing home lady to quilt and I and then got sick. Now I carry a container with a sponge. <laughs> yep, water and alcohol. Good job, for sure. Oh, Tammy wants suggestions for her featherweight name, you guys. All right, I do have a suggestion, Miss Tammy. So typically, if you know the original owner, like this machine's original owner's name was Colleen, it is de definitely the Best case scenario is to be able to um, name the machine after the original owner, if you know it. But these machines, some of them are like 87 years old and not with the original family anymore. So it's impossible to know unless you find like a sales receipt, which I have seen. And it's very cool when you find that in the, um, in the box. So the other thing you can do, Tammy, is to name... <laughs> <laughs> Terry's like, I miss so much chatting with my sister. So it's a good thing to do to give her, yeah, to give her the name of someone that kind of is influential to you in feather in the featherweight world or just in sewing in general. If you had a grandmother that taught you how to sew or even better. And also um, Debbie's suggestion, uh, Sinclair, to name it after the person who gave it to you. That would be a very sweet gesture, I think. <laughs> little Colleen, little Colleen, exactly. Nice, Judy. I don't have that hole. Oh, Charlene, is it a featherweight? You should have that hole. Hmm. Okay. This is what I call the spa day treatment on these machines. Were you guys on on Wednesday? That show was hilarious. Friday. No, th Wednesday. The Wednesday show. Oh. First of all, I had a creeper jump on. Um, Ray, can you throw that? I don't want to smell it. Well, I don't want to touch it. Either. Okay, hold on, guys. I want to throw this away. Well, I don't want to touch it. Um, so I had a creeper jump on the show. And I, it's kind of a long story, but Ray was not like in front of her normal technology 
And so he got away with messaging a couple people before I was able to boot him from the thing. And then we finally got him booted and I got back on and Alicia from Featherweight 38 joined me. We're gonna continue our her series. I can't take any credit for the attachment Wednesday videos. It's such a good idea. Um, but anyway, uh, so she's gonna join me for a couple weeks now, but she was on. And then while we were demonstrating, the um the rolled hammer and the um uh, ruffler attachment both of our machines decided to have a tantrum on camera within about two minutes of each other first it was mine my mary machine which is my 1934 school bell got a uh, rat's nest like a thread jam underneath it i can't even tell you why because i wasn't didn't roll my hand wheel backwards or anything and then Clickety, which is Alicia's machine, she had just been bragging about <laughs> nothing. So she was just bragging about how Clickety was just totally bulletproof and and tried and true. And then right after she says that, <laughs> her presser foot level broke, presser foot lever broke. What the heck? It was it was so bad it was comical. My cheeks hurt from laughing when that show was over with. It was it was too funny. <laughs> Jennifer says she's marrying, um, naming her 1936 fairy godmother from Cinderella. That's so cute. Very cute. Tammy says, I do not know the original owner of her new machine. My friend bought it at a thrift store. Friend's name is Susie. Sounds good to me. Susie the Featherweight. Perfect. I love it. Sunny over on YouTube says... Future topic idea. Okay. What's in my sewing box? <laughs> I'm always curious about notions people love to have with them at all times. Oh, that's a good idea. I kind of did something similar a while ago, but it was more like, what do I have on hand in my quilting studio? But we could do like a Darlene's favorite things thing and I can show notions or I even could take a poll from you guys and see what you guys that would probably be better than what Darlene has in her notion box um and see what you guys love to have like maybe I'll do a poll on Facebook and you guys can tell me what your can't live without notion is that's a great idea Sunny way to go sister way to go blue diva in the UK says I'm a Brenina girl too I have a little 801 mini manic oh from 1977 nice and 800 DL and also had a singer 221 featherweight 1955 for my great grandmother and a 201 alum holy moly Wednesday was brilliant you handled it well <laughs> thank you sweetheart <laughs> sometimes things just go wrong and it's fine if anything it might make you feel better if you've ever had one of those moments in your sewing time whether with friends or alone Sometimes you're just stitching along and your machine, whether it's a featherweight or a Bernina or whatever, decides to have a temper tantrum. And it's good to just keep a cool head and, and start kind of systematically backing up the steps that you did to try and figure out what happened. So, all right. Um, let's see here. Kathy Heiss, buddy from Redmond, says, what can you tell me about machines made in 1939? I have an opportunity to buy one. Okay, so 39 is not a um, particularly difficult to find year or I can tell you that it has the scroll faceplate on it and a chrome hand wheel. Um, they were made in UK and in the US at that point. Probably a US machine if you're buying it here. Um, those machines are the pre-war machines tend to have a real smooth hypnotic quick stitch to them most of the time so uh, i if you have the opportunity to buy a 39 i'd buy it that's a great machine oh <laughs> okay charlene <laughs> missy hi missy other friend from medman hi sweetheart missy one of these days you and i are going to run into each other at the grocery store and it's going to be pretty awesome <laughs> all right mel says have you decided to name the twin of joe's featherweight darlene <laughs> you're naming a machine denise <laughs> she's gonna 
gonna love that. It seems only appropriate if it's a twin machine named Darlene that you name its sister Denise. I mean, sure you don't want to name it like the nephew and Denise or what was what did someone say Donati? Call it Donati. <laughs> Cody says I was thinking about Alice in Wonderland for my school bell. Yes. Yes, but Cinderella calls me, <laughs> calls to me. I like it, Odie. I like it. <laughs> okay, Charlene said, yes, it is a featherweight. Duh. She says it doesn't, it does have the hole, but the thread hold is too big to fit in it. I have a machine that has MR. Oh, you have an MR. Mm, interesting. That's a special one. I don't remember what that is off the top of my head. I think, Charlene, I would look it up on Google, but I think the MR meant that it came out of, oh gosh, what was the MR, Andy? Oh, the motor? Yeah, the MR on the motor. Aunt, my husband's going to look it up real quick because I there is something special about that leaving the factory as a 110 versus a 220 or in UK or it was something like that. Let me let me look it up for you, Charlene. <laughs> uh, Nancy King says, what was the receipt purchase price you had? Oh, I've seen them for like um, the featherweight re receipts that I've seen have been more like 150, 200. Um, the thing about the, um, the original receipts is that we see the number and it's, it seems like a n low number at the time. The other, that was it, Sandy Reese. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Is that the MR under the badge? So, uh, did you ask that? Uh, MR, MR, MR. Who made the MR comment? Oh, right here. Charlene. Okay. Is the your MR under the badge? Yeah, it says on the label. Yeah, so they were made in the UK for Spain and Mexico, and that's the... Um, that's the Spanish equivalent to the TN for trademark. Oh, did you hear that, Charlene? So they were made in the UK plant for the Spanish, or for Spain and Mexico. And the MR is basically the Spanish equivalent of our TM for trademark here in the US. And I think that they're kind of collectible. Like I think that that MR gives it a little bit more of a bump price-wise. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let's see. So anyway, I understand that when you see a receipt like that back in the day, that in today's dollars, that would be equivalent to like $1,800. Like if you take the dollar value back in the day to the dollar, dollar value today. So these machines were pretty pricey back in the day when they were made, which is why they mostly only found themselves in like middle, upper middle class families for the housewives to be able to do clothing construction and mending. That was their original intent. Okay, what am I doing here? Honestly, I don't think Colleen really needs that much, that much cleaning. She's lovely, lovely. So I met a new friend this week at club. You know, the one I forgot to go to until they called me. Um, her name was um, Sherry, very, very sweet lady. It was her first time out in over a year because she was finally fully vaccinated. She had like this big starry-eyed look on her face, like she was so happy to be out in public, I can only imagine. Um, I remember when I had one of my children, I can't remember which one, it was probably my son, because I was on bed rest for a while with him and I wasn't allowed to go outside or do anything. And, <clears throat> and I remember thinking when I finally had him and I could walk out of the hospital and everything looked brighter and the leaves looked greener and you just have this whole like, cause you've been through this big, you know, upheaval like physically and you have a newborn. And so I, I, that was kind of the look that Cherry had at club that she was just so happy to be out with people and to be in a room with other quilters and other like-minded people. And she was new to her featherweight. So it was pretty fun. I really liked meeting Sherry. 
Um, Charlene says, thank you so much. I really appreciate your help. I look forward to seeing you every chance I get. That's awesome. You make my week too. <laughs> All right, friends. Let's see. So this machine, ooh, that's dirty. Do you guys see that? Look at all that grease in there. That's icky. All right, let's get to. So I've done some cleaning on the outside. Now I'm going to get all this extra grease off of here. Remember, do I don't make me get on my soapbox? Look at that. More isn't better. More is just more when it comes to grease. No one wants another lecture, right? So there is still a few spots, by the way, guys, coming up in my um, spa day, the virtual spa day next month. It's on a Saturday. I believe it's the 22nd. Let's see here. Let's see. <clears throat> month. Yes, virtual spa day is the 22nd. And... um. So that would be where um, all of this stuff that I'm doing, we would spend about four hours on a Zoom meeting and I would talk you through how to do all this cleaning and the right chemicals and the wrong chemicals and how to change your belt out and all that fun stuff. So if you guys um, are looking for a place to find out how to take care of your little beauty, you can join me online. Okay. I saw, I'm a, um, <clears throat> no one laugh at me. I'm a country music fan. And I saw that there's some concerts coming out um, next year. And I'm like, <gasps> concerts. I remember concerts. Luke Bryan has a concert tour starting next, next year. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> That's right, Lisa. No crud cutter allowed. Okay. Let's see here. What time, Kim wants to know what time the spa day is. Ray, if you'd put a link, that would be cool. Uh, Lisa, Ray's here so she can put the link on for me. So it's the 22nd. It's a Saturday. It's at 9 a.m. my time here in Seattle. Kim, I'm not sure where you're located, but it's going to go from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. my time. It's four hours. I also do have some beginning machine quilting spots left also. <clears throat> So that's another virtual class in case anybody is looking. Literally, you can take it with your featherweight. You can take it with anything you want. But we are, um, it's taking you through the beginning of starting and stopping lines of quilting, how to use your walking foot. And then there's an intro to free motion also. And it's a two-part series for the beginning. Oh, Luke Bryan is coming to Phoenix, Mom. Ooh. Yeah, so North Carolina would start at noon and go till four. <laughs> Odie says, maybe Cinderella <laughs> might need to be saved for a new 14 inch machine or the next search. Maybe a 222. Should get that name. It might be a while before you find a 222 girl. I'm just saying. They are not coming up as, well, they are rare to begin with. And on a normal year without COVID, I maybe would buy one or two a year, would have the opportunity to buy one or two a year. Now, I mean, there was a big, um, uh, what, what is he called? A big collector that I did buy quite a few from in one year, but that was highly unusual. And honestly, I haven't seen anything since I bought Mr. Holden's lot of machines. Ooh, September 25th. Oh, I'm going to be there. Wait a second. Wait a second. I'm going to be there in September in on Phoenix. 
in Phoenix. <gasps> oh, so exciting. Mom, I'm going to be there. <laughs> Whoa, eBay for fourteen hundred for a two two two. That seems like a lot for e like an eBay thing where you kind of don't know what you're getting. <laughs> Mal likes Luke Bryan, but she loves to Toby Keith. Or I'm sorry, Keith Urban. Totally different than Toby Keith. <laughs> oh, Toby Th Keith is coming to Reno. <gasps> Fun, Jennifer. Uh, Terry says, I think I'll name my 46 Renee. I like that. After the woman I bought her from since we don't know the original owner. I like that. So Renee and Colleen will be your machines. I like it. Oh, with the 110 or the 220 motor, Odie? Okay. What am I doing? A 110 motor. Nice, girl. Well, the good news is, is that there's something wrong with it. I could pretty much talk you through whatever needed to be done. Lisa said, pretty sure that was the date. I leave to see the grandkids. Oh, before Missouri Star Quilting Retreat, but so I can't go. Oh, So sad. Is anybody else like a little gun shy about going to a big concert after this last year or is it just me I was never a big crowd person to begin with and then and then COVID and now I'm like like I'll be out and about like in a park or down by the waterfront and if it's like if there's too many people I'm just like I don't really want to do that not because I'm like think it's not safe or whatever I just just not a big, big crowd person. Never have been. <gasps> Aurora. For your school bell? That's so fun, Mel. Very cool. <laughs> oh, good. It's not just me, Terry. Glad to hear. Ugh. Come on, Colleen. You're giving me some trouble here. A oh, blue diva over in UK says there's quite a few two two twos on eBay. UK at the moment they are going for a twelve to oh wow twelve hundred euros to two thousand euros. Holy moly! Lisa says the bad thing is that the outside in September here. Yes, exactly. It's still miserable outside. Yes. Uh, Mel, we all think Aurora is a great name for your school bell. We're all voting yes. Odie says, crap, 110. No, not yet. Oh, no. Odie's having car trouble. She may not be buying a featherweight. Sandy Reese, what are you talking about? Since you messed up your school bell, I will take, oh, because of the thread jam, Sandy. <laughs> Mary is not for sale. <laughs> but I see what you're doing there. <laughs> Bernadette said, yep, too many people is more than two, is more than two. Step back, peeps. Give me some space. <laughs> I mean, at least when I'm in a classroom these days, everyone's still really spread out. So we're not kind of piled on top of each other. And everything's limited right now because of, you know, like social distancing restrictions. So... <laughs> All right. 
Miss Colleen is getting a new pair of shoes here. I think putting new bed cushions on the bottom of your machine is one of those things where you spend $6 and it's like you spent a million when you don't have to chase your machine across the table. It's literally like the most inexpensive thing that you can do to increase your the quality of your sewing time. Oh, Rogi. Rogi's pouting on the floor because we won't let him go eat the baby bunnies. Oh, yeah. Rogue. There he is. <laughs> He's like, hi, ladies. Mm hmm. Yep, yep, yep. I get it, Blue Diva. Okay, what am I doing? I got that. I got that. I need to oil underneath here. And my light. Okay. If you're looking for the oiling points, there was a video in January that I did because there are so many new people to featherweights. I did a four-week series called Featherweight University, and I went over all of the oil holes, including the every eight-hour ones. So if you're um, new to the featherweight world, you should definitely check out those videos because you may not even realize that these guys, some of them take um, an oil, an oiling uh, drop of oil every eight hours. And another thing to do is to check behind the bobbin assembly for thread. <laughs> Bernadette, no rabbit stew for Rogue. No, ma'am. We have been... I actually don't think he'd want to hurt them unless they started trying to hop away from him. And then he'd be like, it's a game. Let's chase. Um, but still, he's like 80 pounds and they're like not even one. And it wouldn't be a fair... They're so big. They're yeah, they're like, they're like this big. They're so cute. Terry says California's in really good shape now. It's about time. We've been locked down for so long. I actually sat in a restaurant last month for the first time in 13 months. I did some touch-up painting with, oh good, Ford Tuxedo Black. Worked great. Fabulous, Mel. On your feather rate. Very nice. Oh, Lisa's running. I hope you heal up, okay, friend. Thanks for joining us tonight. Okay, so that's all oiled. We need some new grease in here on the gears. Just the right amount, not too much. Okay. Give this little cutie bye a new oil drip pan. Mom, I have seen the Mama Bunny. She's around the backyard. She gives all of us side eye when we go out there for you know with Rogue to make sure he's not disturbing her her little nest. So we walk out with him. He needs an escort, and she kind of gives us side eye like, "You better keep him away from my babies." Bernadette said we had some bunnies in our yard and we had to keep our Morky out of the backyard. I know, they're tenacious about it. Again, I don't think he wants to hurt them. I just think he's curious and he could accidentally hurt them. What'd you say? Nature. Yeah. <laughs> and he said it's nature. <laughs> it's the circle of life. 
The circle of life is circling me. <laughs> Does anybody have any big plans for this weekend? Other than doing year-end inventory like I am? Super exciting stuff, friends. Super exciting stuff. Oh, how often do you change your drip pan? I don't, I, I change the machines or the drip pans every time I, um, I service the machine, but I don't, um, do it each year. Basically when it starts kind of smelling, then I, then I change the drip pan. So it's usually every couple of years or so. Oh, are you on your way to Yellowstone now from the Grand Tetons? Totally jealous. We live in the country and cats play with the bunnies. Play as in massacre the bunnies, Joanne. <laughs> oh, a QOV so in. Yes, yeah, Sandy Reese is homeless. You need to find a home this weekend. I have I'm feeling good about this weekend, Sandy. Feeling good about this weekend. Ooh, Mel's painting the bathroom tomorrow. Well, that doesn't sound like very much fun. Myra! Hi, Myra. What are you doing this weekend? Let's see. Jackie Perez says, I'm watching a featherweight videos while I recover from, oh, from your second flu, from your second COVID shot. That's probably all you're going to be in the mood for is watching some videos. Oh, Judy P is seeing your son for the first time in 15 months. That's fun. <laughs> Joanne, oh no, the bunny, okay, her kitties don't massacre the bunnies. They play with the bunnies. Okay. Can I watch this again? Valuable info. Charlene, yes. Actually, if you, you can go out to um, Facebook and watch everything on demand on Facebook or Ann Warren's on. Hi, Ann. Or you can go out to YouTube and subscribe to my channel and then you can watch all of my back content on YouTube also under Featherweight Doctor. Uh, Linda Wood says alternating prom wedding and other clothing. Everyone needs alterations. I get that, girl. That's it. So you're working this weekend, too. Nice. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Therese says trying to get some flowers in the ground and get some sewing done. It is it is that weekend, isn't it? Well, we up here in the Pacific Northwest, we can't plant anything until Mother's Day because it's we, sometimes we get snowstorms and a, a deep frost. So we have to be really careful about that in the Northwest. Myra's going to her granddaughter's softball game and finishing up a... Joanne Hoffman feather pillow. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Let's see here. Okay, that is moving well. Okay, let me hit my oil points on the top of my machine here. Let's see here. All right, friends. Well, it is that time where I need to sign off before I get thrown off. Do me a favor and check your computer over the weekend. I'm probably, I'm going to put up a, one of those polls where you can, I'm going to ask everybody what their favorite notions are. So uh, be looking for that because we can talk about that Monday on the Ask the Doctor show because I love that suggestion, Miss Sunny. I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. It's supposed to be raining around here in the Northwest, so we definitely will be inside. But I hope everybody can go find some sun on their head and their happy place. Blue Diva says, I'm currently working through my 
um, all of my previous posts over the past month and taking lots of notes. Thank you so SCW much for, uh, you are definitely the featherweight je Jedi. <laughs> I love that. My husband loves Star Wars. I know what a Jedi is. <laughs> American Zoe Gilbert. Oh, on ice dying. Nancy King. That sounds fun. Good to see you too, Miss Myra. Thanks, Kim. I hope you have a great weekend. I'll be back on Monday, 4 o'clock Pacific, right here on YouTube and Facebook, and 10 minutes before on Instagram. It was so nice to hang out with everybody. Jennifer, I look forward to meeting you in person. Taking care of your 1936. Bye, Terry. I'm taking care of Colleen. I'll have her bucket buttoned up here in about an hour. I hope you have a good weekend, everybody. Bye.